are several good reasons for being precise and thorough when timing an engine. But today, with the emphasis on ecology and pollution-free air, it is more important than ever because many states are inspecting cars and ruling them off the road if they emit too much carbon monoxide, oxides of nitrogen, or hydrocarbons. In other words, if the engine adjustments, which include ignition timing, are not done right, your customer may not be able to drive at all, whether he's happy with the way his car runs or not. As it happens, our ecological goal, air free of pollution, is reached in the same way we get maximum efficiency from the engine. Adjusting the engine to precise factory specifications. Here's why. When the ignition and carburetor are both adjusted properly, fuel ignited by the spark plug will begin to burn evenly when the piston is in the right position to begin the power stroke. When the power stroke is finished, ideally the fuel will be completely burned and the byproducts coming out during the exhaust stroke will be carbon dioxide, nitrogen and water vapor. Our objective is to come as close to this ideal as possible. By understanding the importance of proper ignition timing and how to do it, we can clean up the air while we make engines run better. As mentioned earlier, there are two automatic systems for adjusting the moment of ignition based on the speed of the car and the load on the engine. They are the centrifugal advance and vacuum advance. Here is how the centrifugal advance works. As we know, at idle speed, the spark is adjusted to occur at approximately the point where the piston reaches top dead center. The exact point will vary a few degrees, depending on model and latest factory specifications. At high speed, it is necessary to deliver the spark to the combustion chamber earlier to give the mixture ample time to burn and deliver its power to the piston. The centrifugal advance does this by two weights that throw out against spring tension as engine speed increases. This movement is transmitted to the breaker cam and causes it to advance or move ahead with respect to the distributor shaft. The ignition timing consequently varies from no advance at low speed to full advance at high speed when the weights have reached the outer limits of their travel. The centrifugal advance takes care of conditions of full throttle at high speed and acceleration at medium speed. But there are other situations requiring spark advance that it can't cope with. At part throttle, where maximum power is not being demanded of the engine, compression pressures are lower. The rate of combustion is slower, but it is still necessary to advance the ignition timing to obtain satisfactory burning of the fuel-air mixture. In this situation, the engine speed is too low to throw the weights out far enough, so the vacuum advance helps out. It works like this. Under part throttle, a vacuum develops in the intake manifold. The vacuum acts on a diaphragm, which is linked to the breaker plate. When the diaphragm moves out against spring tension, the breaker plate moves with it and carries the breaker points along so that the cam, as it rotates, closes and opens the breaker points earlier in the cycle. In order to meet low emission requirements, a double vacuum advance distributor has been developed. Its purpose is to assure that the spark will be fully retarded when the engine is idling, assuring fullest combustion of the fuel and therefore minimum exhaust emissions. Briefly, there is a separate diaphragm and vacuum chamber for retard position that works opposite to the advanced diaphragm. When the throttle is closed, a vacuum at tube A acts on the retard diaphragm 
which moves the breaker plate to retard ignition. When the throttle is partly opened, it uncovers tube B, causing a vacuum which acts on the advanced diaphragm, moving the breaker plate to advance ignition. The result is, as soon as the throttle is opened, the advance jumps ahead six to eight degrees. And when it is closed, the spark is quickly and fully retarded. This is a typical timing curve, centrifugal in red and vacuum in blue. Both advance mechanisms of this particular distributor should operate within the colored areas. For example, at 750 RPM, the distributor shaft should be advanced between four and seven degrees due to centrifugal action. At 1500 RPM, rotation should be between nine and 11 degrees. And at 2000 RPM, rotation should be at its maximum, 13 and a half degrees. Note that RPM and degrees of advance are expressed in distributor shaft rotation and not crankshaft RPM, which would be twice as much. With the throttle open, the vacuum advance starts to operate at 70 millimeters of mercury. At 230 millimeters, the vacuum advance reaches its maximum, and no increase in the vacuum will cause this system to advance the spark any further. With the throttle closed, the distributor shaft is retarded between three and four degrees when the vacuum reaches 150 millimeters of mercury. When adjusting timing, always check the spark plugs. If they are in good condition, clean them and adjust the electrode gap. If they are badly worn or damaged, replace them with plugs in the proper heat range. A careful inspection of the spark plugs can often reveal a source of trouble. These plugs show only four of the many problems that can be diagnosed by careful inspection. Ignition timing advanced too far. Pre-ignition or detonation. Fouling caused by incorrect spark plugs. Incomplete combustion. Pre-ignition and detonation are related problems and both can be caused by improper ignition timing. Let's look at normal combustion. As the piston arrives at or nears the top of its compression stroke, the spark occurs and begins to burn the compressed fuel. Combustion sweeps evenly across the confined area containing the fuel-air mixture. The burning process causes a rapid expansion in the gases, causing a pressure on the piston and driving it down. Detonation, on the other hand, can occur, especially under load and with heavy throttle pressure with abnormally advanced spark. For example, let's say we get a spark when the piston is only three quarters up and compression rate is at its maximum. This pressure produces heat, which added to the heat of the burning fuel, causes a portion of the fuel charge to ignite spontaneously. The two flame fronts meet, and the resulting detonation causes a noisy hammering pressure on the piston and stresses on other engine parts. This is what can happen. The piston head has literally disintegrated due to persistent detonation. The effect of pre-ignition is very similar to detonation. The main difference is that the spark plug fires after the false ignition instead of before. Both conditions are usually called knocking and can also be caused by fuel of improper octane rating. We have seen that a properly timed engine will run cooler and deliver more power per gallon of fuel. The engine will last longer and the exhaust will be cleaner. Considering all the benefits of proper ignition timing, it doesn't seem possible that incorrect timing is the most common automobile problem. If 
you follow these simple adjustment procedures, according to the book, you will know that the cars you work on will not add to this problem. Thank you.